Prime Minister now moving a national security amendment. Let's listen. Values which we all hold, values of freedom, values of fairness, values of compassion, values of solidarity, values that of course have shaped our approach to building this nation Australia, but values which we also take to shape our voice in the councils of the world. Chifley, as always, said it best of all. He said that we should aim to reach by working for the betterment of mankind, not only here, but anywhere, anywhere where we may give a helping hand. Friends, our values, Labor values, have never stopped at the continental shelf. Unlike the Conservatives, we've never believed in a little Australia. We've never believed in an inward-looking Australia. We do not believe in some sort of monocultural Australia. We are a party instead of an open heart, a clear mind, and always with a plan for action. An outward-looking Australia, confident of our place in the region and the world. An Australia that celebrates the diversity that we have at home as we become home to every country and every culture and peoples from them from across the world. And confident we are, therefore, in dealing with the diversity and complexity that lies beyond our shores. Friends, this is not Tony Abbott's vision for Australia. What does Captain Stunt, Captain Negative, Field Marshal No, have to say about Australia's future? The challenges we face, the complexity we face, the diversity we face in the world today. Well, Captain Negative has his own vision, his own brand new idea for the future. It's in his book, Battle Lines, and as you know, if it's written in black and white, it must be true. It's not a lie, it's written in his own hand, it must be true. Therefore, what does he offer for this century ahead, this Asia-Pacific century? What he says, the future lies, wait for it, in the Anglosphere, quote unquote. It's there in black and white. In Tony's immortal words, he says, overwhelmingly, the modern world is one that has been made in English, unquote. Well, pity about the Chinese, second largest economy in the world. Pity about our friends in Japan, the third largest economy in the world. Forget about those folk to our near north, they're called Indonesia. A quarter of a million, quarter of a billion of them about to become one of the world's ten largest economies. And by the way, let's not mention the Germans. They actually invented the printing press. But in Tony's brave new world, he says, overwhelmingly, the modern world is one that's been made in English. Abbott's Anglosphere, that's his vision of the future in his words, in his pen, in his hand, in black and white, in his book for Australia's future. Well, that's the brave new world, according to Tony. What I think is a combination of Rudyard Kipling, Biggles and the Boys' Own Annual. That's Tony's vision of the future. Lots of daring do, lots of noble raids, not a single visionary idea in the man's head. Delegates, if it wasn't so dangerous, it'd be hilarious. But I repeat what I have said before. Mr Abbott has neither the experience nor the temperament to ever be Prime Minister of this great country, Australia. <laughs> Friends, delegates, this Labor government is made of different stuff. When we together confronted the global financial crisis, the government acted amidst a wave of criticism from across this country. We kept Australia out of recession. We kept the economy growing. We kept a quarter of a million Australians from losing their jobs. And instead, we've helped create three quarters of a million new jobs, a million jobs. Not a bad difference when it comes to making a difference in the face of a global economic onslaught. And the reason we're able to do so is because we were driven by Labor values and we acted as a Labor team in government. A team made up of Julia, of Wayne, who's with us here today, of Lindsay Tanner, a former great Australian finance minister, of Chris Bowen, then as Assistant Treasurer, 
as Trade Minister Simon Crean, Kim Carr as Industry Minister and other members of a Labor cabinet acting together, acting as a team to make a difference for Australia and to keep Australians in work. A good achievement. Friends, for, cabinet, for a Labor cabinet, the fundamental task is keeping Australians in jobs. In the midst of the debates in this conference, delegates, let us be clear that there is once again the spectre of a global financial crisis hanging over our heads. The global economic storm crowds have gathered again. The world now teeters on the edge of a second global financial crisis as we teeter also, therefore, on the edge of a second global economic recession. As in 2008-09, interbank lending is tightening, spreads are widening, the real economy in Europe is faltering, and with weakening demand in Europe and in the United States, growth is now slowing in China. As before, Australia is not immune from developments in the world. Friends, our global economic future very much hangs on what European leaders decide one week from today in Brussels. We wish them well in their momentous decisions which lie before them. Not just momentous decisions for the future of Europe, momentous decisions for the rest of the world. The resources they need for the European Financial Stability Fund. The full mandate for the European Central Bank to act the future of a European fiscal union, because the alternative is the disillusion of the Eurozone itself and a return to national currencies. Friends, here in Australia, however, we should have confidence in this, the strength of our economic fundamentals, the experience we have from negotiating the first global financial crisis, and a team which remains fundamentally in place to deal with any challenges we face for the future. Friends, I am proud of the foreign policy record of this Labor government. This Labor government has helped create the G20, and Australia, for the first time in its history, has a place at the top economic table in the world. We are proud that we've helped build an Asia-Pacific community, with the historic summit attended last month by our Prime Minister, Julia Gillard. I am proud of the fact that this Labor government withdrew our troops from Iraq, a war in which we should never have engaged. I am proud that we have led the international diplomatic initiative for a no-fly zone in Libya, resulting in the removal, ultimately, of one of the world's worst last remaining dictators. We are also leading the Western diplomatic response to signs of political change in Burma in partnership with Aung San Suu Kyi. We ratified Kyoto and we've created a 20% mandatory renewable energy target at home and a price on carbon in order to give effect to our global obligations. And friends, we have doubled our foreign aid in just five years and we are on track over the next five years to double our aid again. If this is sustained, Australia will be one of the top seven or eight global donors to the international aid effort across the board, a record of which we should be proud. And it is why, friends, why delegates, this country has not sat around and waited for others to lead in the relief effort in the Horn of Africa. We have led in the global relief effort to the Horn of Africa. We are its third largest national donors, acting for you, acting for this party, acting for the movement, and in the good name of the good people of Australia. Friends, to conclude, these are all the hallmarks of an Australian Labor foreign policy, one which does not seek to retreat from the global stage, but one which says we can make a difference on the global stage. That is what we're about. But friends, there is much work still to be done, and some of this work is reflected in the amendments and resolutions which lie before this conference today, many of which we have worked on with delegates to this conference. An amendment that commits Australia to lead the global effort towards an asbestos-free world. Based on this amendment, Australia in 2012 
will convene a global conference in partnership with the Global Alliance Against Asbestos Hazards and the International Labour Organisation. If we realise this ambition, we will at last have fulfilled the dream, the last dying dream of Bernie Banton, and at last Bernie can rest in peace. Friends across the world, we also have trade unionists who are being persecuted for the exercise of basic labour rights and human rights. Under the amendment before you today, we, through the Australian aid budget, will support the increase in labour standards. We will increase also uh, our efforts to train trade unionists across the emerging world so that they can act as a voice for organised labour across the global community. Friends, another amendment before us today, and one which we fully support, is one for the first time in this country's history of appointing a dedicated ambassador for human trafficking. We intend to lead the effort to eliminate human trafficking, this scourge of all humankind, this modern slavery, which our civilised community of nations must stamp out as we've stamped out slavery in decades and centuries before. And finally, friends, we have a resolution before us which calls upon Australia to work towards a nuclear weapons-free zone for the entire Southern Hemisphere. A nuclear weapons-free zone which seeks to link earlier efforts by earlier Labor governments with the South Pacific nuclear-free zone, emerging efforts for a nuclear weapons-free zone in Southeast Asia, a nuclear weapons-free zone also in Latin America and Africa, and to join these in one global effort to say no to nuclear weapons in this, our wider part of this planet. These are the initiatives of these Labor delegates on the floor of this conference, and I am proud of them. <laughs> conference, uh, colleagues. Delegates, friends, one and all, the last platform on foreign policy we delivered in 2009, I have circulated to you how on each item of the platform we have made advances and where we still have more to go. That has been circulated to all delegates as my report card to you, the members of this conference. But there is much more to be done. I support every effort by this Australian Labor government to realise Labor's values in the world and region at large. I commend the chapter to the conference. Thank you, Delegate. I call on Delegate Smith to second the chapter.